Hello again, and welcome back to the Noisy Communication Channel, part two, where we are going to look at the binary symmetric channel and also other channels and the capacities of those channels. Let's start with a binary symmetric channel, the performance of it. And here you see a, a graph that shows the error rate one minus P as a function of the capacity which has maximum of one. And here is the binary symmetric channel. And you see there is a probability of having, uh, going from one to one is P and going from one to zero is one, one minus P. And seen, since it's symmetric, it's also the same probability of going from zero to one, that is one minus P. And from zero to zero, which is correct is P and one to one is also correct. And we got the formula that we found last time that said that the capacity of the channel is R, R max when the uh, entropy is of the X side is given by this and the conditional entropy is this. And then we got an expression like this. And this expression is what I've shown here. And here you see capacity and here you see the error rate and when the uh, capacity is one there is no errors and you see here when the capacity drops also the error rates uh, error rate increases and when you come down here where you have no capacity the error rate is a half uh, one half that means that is plain guesswork what you're doing because the probability of having going from one to one or one to zero is the same. And also in this going from zero to one or zero to zero is also just guesswork is a one half. You can also look at the so-called correct rate P as a function of capacity and they use the same formula, but just a different graph. And here you see the capacity down here and the correct rate. And you see, you see that when you, the capacity is one, the correct rate is one. And as you go down worse here, uh, the capacity lowers, then the correct rate drops and is one half when the capacity is zero, because then it's just guesswork what is happening here. Now we are going to look at the binary symmetrical channel with Gaussian noise, random noise. And here you see a signal and going from zero to one and down to one again, or sorry, to zero again. And it's called non-return to zero coding because we're representing zero with a negative voltage and one with a positive voltage. Here you see transitions from zero to one and here from one to zero and the noise you can see around this one the value that you should expect is this one but then you have some noise around here and the standard deviation for the noise is given by this blue line here and here this one. so in this case here there's a little less noise here than this one because this one is broader is more noise and the problem is when you are, for instance, sending a one and you receive something down here, then you guess, guess incorrect because you are sending out a one and receiving what you guess is a zero and, and then you get an arrow. And it's the same way if you are, have a lot of noise on the zero signal, so you, you come up here, then you will guess it's a one and then you also get an arrow. So we are interested in the area under here because this represents the area where you do guess wrong. So this is the area where we are interested in. So here is just an, one more way of looking at it. We see that X1 is the positive value, A plus some noise and is given here, here is the noise, here is the A value. And we have the same here on the other side, it's the negative value 
which representing the zero is minus a and with some noise around it. And this uh, distribution here is given by, by that one. So that is one sigma squared to two p a minus a one half x minus a divided by sigma squared. So that gives the shape of the Gaussian noise. And um, we, as, as said before, we are interested in these two areas here. And the area under here, the statistics can say that is the, that is the error, error function. And we are interested in that one. And that is called the complementary error function. And then that is one minus the error function. But you see here that is a minus t squared dt. So we have to get our function f of x on this form in order to calculate our complementary error function. And that is what we are going to do now. Uh, it, it will be some mathematics. You have to bear over with me, but I will try to guide you through as good as I can. And we are going to do this probability calculation. We are just looking at the positive value here because it's the same for the negative value. It's just the mirrored. So let's start here. We have the normal distribution, f of x, one sigma squared two p a minus one half x minus a divided by sigma squared. And we start by making a substitution. U is x minus a. a. And that is, of course, to get rid of this one up here. And then we have to get new limits on the integral. So go, it goes from zero to lambda instead of from r to lambda, or plus lambda, sorry. And then is one sigma squared two p a minus one half. And instead of x minus a, we now have u and du. And, uh, and then we substitute this here, one half u squared sigma squared here with t squared and taking the square root, we get this one. And then we take the derivative and now we have du as a function of dt and we can substitute du with dt and, and getting this formula here. We have to also then change the, the, the limits. So we got now these limits instead and we get something that is close to the error function here. So here we got it very close to the error function. So it's one half of the error function with these variables inside here. So we made it. And now we can look at the binary symmetric channel where P zero and P one is one half. So we, we know that, we know the, the P. And then we have P1, and then we have the probability of having P1 and guessing wrongly, or, or sorry, getting zero. That the, the is conditional probability. And then sending P0 and getting P1 when sending zero. And then P1 and P0 is one half, one half, and then you have the error function. So, so it gets one half of the error function here. And then you can substitute for R and then you get the, the energy per bit divided by the noise per Hertz. And then you can draw graphs like this, where you have energy per bit for noise per Hertz in dBs and the error rate as a function. And here you see uh, as the threshold, as we call it, goes downwards, you will have more errors. So for this binary symmetric channel, for instance, if you have uh, 12 dB of EB over N zero, you can have an error rate of one to the minus eight. But if you just have, uh, for instance, uh, uh, eight dB, you will get something like this. And if you have uh, just two dBs, you will of course have a lot of errors. So the error rate increases as 
this ratio between the energy per bit and the noise uh, decreases. And then we can look at the capacity of the binary symmetric channel. P0 is equal to P1 is one half. The symmetric channel gives lambda equal to zero. And then we have the capacity, which, is, which was R max HX minus HYX. And then we got this expression, one plus P log two to P plus one minus P log two, one minus P. And then we can just put in the, the error of, or the comp uh, complementary error functions here. And, and we get this expression here. And now again, we can take EB for N zero uh, and have the capacity as a function of that. And you see, as we go downwards, capacity is one, but when we are closing in on uh, something like eight dB, so a little lower, then it drops off and then it steadily drops off to the capacity go downwards. Then we can look at uh, another popular modulation form, which is called the quadrature amplitude modulation, where you have, this is the constellation diagram for a 16 QM. And here you see 16 points and each point represents four bits. And here you see uh, a, a four QAM where you, where you have four points. And here you see it from one of the sides and here you see the transition from one, uh, uh, here is one sample here and one sample here, and here is the transition. And if you, for instance, sample here, you get a lot of noise, but if you move your sample instant to here, sample, sorry, sampling instant to here, you get just these four points. And here you see the same for 16 QIM. Here you see that from in, in three dimension with the uh, two channels I and Q as they are called. And you see here is the sampling points in time. And here you see the, the signal moving from one place to another place in the constellation diagram. And if you look at the constellation diagram from one side, like, like looking into here, you see that you have these points where you should sample. You should not sample here, you should sample here. And these are called eye openings. And you should sample where the eye openings is greatest. So this is the QIM. So can we do the same for the QIM as we did for the binary channel? Let's try. Um, here you see we have some Gaussian arrow around every point here. This is in, on the inside, here you have the edge and here you have the corners. And you also have some gray coding included. Gray coding is done in a way so that you also uh, do some coding here. Here you see that going from this one to this one, you change just one bit. And going from this one to this one, you go, change just one bit. But if you go from this one, you change more than one bit. So, and also you can, uh, when you're going from this one to this one, you also change one bit. So you can put coding into the constellation here or other symbols. And this is called the gray coding. Um, and here I just found a derivation of the error rate, it's quite complex, but uh, we just looked at as an example of a binary channel. And I looked at these two um, uh, in this direction here where we had two Gaussian curves. Now we have to look at the whole thing and then you get something like this. M is the number of constellation points. So for a, a this one here, which is 16 QM, the number of constellation points will be 16. And here you have the um, error function again, or the complementary error function. And you have energy per bit and the noise per Hertz and M. 
and then you get error ratio curves like this. Here is the error ratio. Here is the EB per N0. And you see here, as you go from uh, NR set, which we know return to zero, which we saw was this one here and to 120, 8 QAM, which is here, you see that uh, this system here is much more vulnerable to noise uh, than this one. And the reason for that is, of course, when you are making just an uh, an offset or a 4 QAM, you just have four points very far away from each other. But when you are putting points closer together, because you have a maximum energy for sending out, these points will be closer and there will be more likely errors and you get an error rates, rates which is higher for the same EB over N0. I also had some fun of calculating the capacity of the QIM. I used the formula that we have found. I put in what I've got from Mr. Kuhn. And I got this expression here. I made a, a, a capacity C as a function of EB divided by N0. And hey, here, you, as expected, you see uh, NL set goes like this, even though it's a different color because the 4QIM and NR set is upon each other here. And you see when you are going to higher modulations, it drops up earlier. And this was the last slide for the noisy channel. Hope you have learned something. I find it very interesting. Bye bye for now.